placement signals are um, often also known as stress signals or calming signals. Um, dogs are really social species and they've evolved to avoid conflict wherever possible. So the way they do that is through some of these conflict appeasement or stress signals. Um, and they're ritualized body movements or sounds to avoid conflict with us and with other dogs. Um, so there's this amazing Norwegian trainer named Turid Rugas who years ago wrote a book called On Talking Terms with Dogs where she identified about 30 of these That's signals. A great book. Uh, places you might see a conflict appeasement signal would be maybe somewhere like a dog park where a dog runs up to another dog, that second dog might get a little stiff, show them a little side eye, turn their head, sniff the ground. That's all telling that approaching dog, your behavior is making me feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. and so you need to change your behavior because I'm trying to avoid a conflict with you. Um, other places you might see stress signals, um, vet clinics, if you look around a vet clinic you'll see mm -hmm. a lot of dogs scratching themselves, shaking off even though they're not wet, um, drooling, stress panting, things like that. Yeah. yeah, I would say, I think, you know, we see those signals all the time from dogs, but so many people don't recognize them when they see them or they don't know what to look for. Things that you wouldn't think, of, you know, above and beyond the norm, like like stretching, yawning, lip licking. Um, you know, a lot of dogs will give you the whale eye where they're looking at you, but their head is turned away. Um, you know, any kind of heavy drooling, I mean, ears back, tail tucked, stiff body, I mean, the list goes on, right? Right. And um, what you're describing are all really important things to look for in a dog-dog interaction. Mm -hmm. So if you're managing dog play or you're introducing dogs to each other, um, things to look for are red flags like getting really stiff, showing a little side eye, lip curling, um, that indicates that the dog is feeling pretty uncomfortable mm -hmm. and might be ready to snap at that point, so you need to back off or change the behavior in some way. Right. Um, so what can we do when we see stress signals or conflict appeasement signals? Um, the first thing that we should do is evaluate the environment. So what's going on in the situation? Is the dog feeling stressed because of something happening in the environment? Mm -hmm. um, is, are the, is the dog feeling uncomfortable or stressed because of something you're doing? Um, so evaluating the situation, changing um, the environment if necessary, or removing the dog from the situation. Um, also, it's great to keep a um, record of some of these things where you see these um, stress signals. So then you can actually do some purposeful training sessions to start changing those emotional responses. Um, so for example, a lot of dogs um, are really stressed out when they go to the vet, um, so you see a lot of stress signals. If you're at the vet with your own dog and you're seeing a lot of those stress signals, um, what you can do is um, start trying to change those feelings by making the vet visit um, a little bit better for your dog somehow. Bring some treats, have the vet techs give them some treats, um, do things like happy visits where you're coming to the vet clinic and nothing bad happens to the dog. They're just walking around, sniffing, having some positive experiences, and then leaving. Um, so you start to change those feelings of, of anxiety in a vet clinic. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a concept. I mean, taking your dog to the vet just for training purposes, like most people would never even think of that because, I mean, you know, just to go and like get treats and love and sit on a scale, like that's awesome. I love that for dogs. But you also wanna make sure you're not punishing those conflict appeasement signals. So like if, if two dogs come to meet and one growls at the other, usually clients get really upset and they're like, they're really quick to want to punish that dog, when in reality, that's good communication, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think what you said is really important. Mm -hmm. So um, when two dogs are interacting and you see a correction or something like that, um, not punishing the dog that's giving a correction because oftentimes it is appropriate communication. Um, and so we don't want to penalize the dog for trying to avoid conflict with another dog. We want to encourage good communication. Yeah, because what happens if you do punish that? Um, it, well, sometimes it can make those sort of signals go away completely. So instead of growling or trying to communicate mm -hmm. that they're feeling uncomfortable, they've been punished for something like that, they'll go immediately to snapping or lunging or biting. Yeah.